We are on our way to Cape Coral. Martin has recommended that we contact Hannah Whitfield. We read once again what she testified under oath. Sea Org members are frequently held prisoner in a dark, stinking, rat-infested hole. Jerry and Hannah Whitfield were members of the elite Sea Org unit for years. Hannah even rose to become Deputy Commodore, the representative of the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. These pictures were taken, I think, in 19... These pictures were taken in the early 70s. That's me in the middle, that's Diana, the eldest daughter of Hubbard, and his third wife, Mary Sue. Here I am again. That is Hubbard's daughter and his son, Quentin. I was loyal to an absolute and total fault. I was loyal to him, absolutely and totally. Yet I was accused of having bad thoughts, bad thoughts about Hubbard. That was my alleged crime. I was dragged by two strong men to a location in the Fort Harrison Hotel next to the garage. The correction facility was on the second and third floor. I was locked into a windowless room for about two days all alone. Hannah tells us about the conditions in the cells. I didn't have a bed, had nothing. Only a mattress on the floor. I had no bed, no nothing. There was a mattress on the floor. Um, the lights were sometimes on, sometimes off. We did a lot of repair work. We did the dirty work, the menial, the menial work. Cleaning toilets and bathrooms. And when there was reconstruction activity in the Fort Harrison Hotel, we had to carry the debris down from the top floor in buckets and then the cement back up. We had to carry buckets up the stairs. We weren't allowed to use the elevators. We had to carry buckets up the stairs. We were not allowed to use the elevators. Here is the three stories high garage of the Fort Harrison Hotel and a black dress Scientologist, apparently a convict. Hannah's fellow prisoner, Lynn, had even been chained in the cellar. She was a member of the Guardian's office. She was a member of the Guardian's office. It's something like the CIA, the undercover spy department of the organization. Today, it's called the Office of Special Affairs. The Office of Special Affairs is commonly referred to as OSA. Lynn had been sent on an investigation to Washington. She had found irregularities and wanted that to be looked into. Her superiors were against that idea. They wanted to cover it all up. So Lynn was sent to the correction facility in the Fort Harrison Hotel. There, they chained Lynn to the pipe. She was about two to three weeks locked in the basement. She slept down there. She ate down there. She was made to work down there cleaning the pipes. She was made to work down there cleaning the pipes. I would sometimes entertain the thought of... I would sometimes entertain the thought of calling the police for help. But always it was followed by the thought that would be the greatest crime against Hubbard and the organization. You just cannot do it. Absolutely not. Cannot do it. Absolutely not. We have an appointment with Sergeant Greg Tida, Deputy Sheriff of Pinellas County, in which Scientology stronghold Clearwater is situated. We heard that there may even be correction camps for children in the organization of Scientology. In this internal document, it clearly states that Hubbard re-established a cadet org in 1976 along with a children's rehabilitation project force at the camp. They observed what they believed to be evidence of child neglect. My colleagues observed what they believed to be evidence of child neglect. They filed a report to the sheriff's office and the case was handed to the Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services. Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services. However, Scientology filed a complaint against the publishing of the report in the press, and successfully so. It is closed to this very day. I don't think that the fight had to do with the report as such. It had to do with information on Scientology that would be released as public record. Ariana Jackson should know what happens to Scientology children. She was forced to separate from three of her four children. They were two, four, and six years old then. Scientology put them in an orphanage and later made cadets out of them. That was ten years ago. Later, she only had contact with them sporadically. Since Ariana turned her back to Scientology, she isn't allowed to see her children at all. 
do you remember the goodbye? Yes. Yes, it was terrible. I hate to remember that. The children were just taken forcibly from you? There was no way to stop them? Yeah, it's because they were put in a special bus. And then what happened? And an old man from the Sea Org shoved me away and put me in a car. I could just wave, and then we drove back to the airport. Does that happen often, that Scientologists who are part of the Sea Org will find themselves separated from their children? Yes. Yes. There are other cases? Yeah. Yes. Yes, when the partners separate with a divorce and one of them is in the Sea Org, that one is the better person, so that one gets the children. After all, what's better for the children than a Scientology treatment, Scientology school, Scientology everything? Scientology treatment, Scientology school, Scientology everything. The police station of Clearwater is only a stone's throw away from the Fort Harrison Hotel, the center of Scientology in Florida. Here we meet Ariana Jackson again the following day. Martin Ottman has convinced her to give testimony to assist in an ongoing investigation by the Clearwater Police against the Scientologists. It involves the mysterious death of a young Scientologist, Lisa McPherson, who lived at the Fort Harrison. Gary Scarf wants to support the investigation as well. He has offered his help to the police. Thanksgiving. Lisa McPherson, here with her mother, died in December of 1995 under strange circumstances, just a short time after she had successfully concluded a Scientology course. Lisa wanted out, says the lawyer for the family. After a nervous breakdown 17 days before her death, the church isolated her fully in the Fort Harrison Hotel. From our investigation, she was unconscious. From our investigations, it appears that she was unconscious. She didn't get food or water. She was extremely dehydrated. Before she lost consciousness, she hammered the walls with her hands, trying to get out. Walls, trying to get out. How do you know all this? The Scientologists themselves have admitted that she pounded the walls. From the autopsy report, it appears that Lisa was administered strong medication before her death. To sedate her? So if she was heavily sedated, if she fell into a coma from the heavy sedation or from a psychotic breakdown, we don't know. In any case, they decided very late to bring her into the clinic. And instead of driving her to the nearest hospital that's only a few blocks away, she was brought to the Columbia Newport Ritchie Hospital, 